So this study was um, conducted as um, part of my postgraduate degree at um, the Anna Freud Center University College London and Yale University and the study itself was um, performed at the Yale Child Study Center and uh, there at the uh, Developmental Electrophysiology Lab which is led by Mike Crowley and Linda Mays. So um, the study itself really um, well, the, the aim of this study was to exploit a, a, a popular, tightly controlled um, computerized ball toss game, which is called Cyberball, and was originally developed by Kit Williams to study social exclusion, and used that as a means to study one of the key proposals which lies at the heart of attachment theory. So, um, in a nutshell, that proposal boils down to that we generalize what we have learned in the attachment relationship and which we then um, integrate into an internal working model by forming expectations about how the world will react to our effective signals and that we carry these over into new encounters with unfamiliar others. And this really colors how we perceive and expect um, how others will react to us, which naturally influences the course of the relationship, much like a self-fulfilling self prophecy, if you will. So what we know from a number of elegant studies in the field is that secure attachment patterns predict social competence and popularity with peers. And we also know that securely attached children seek more support um, during encounters with unfamiliar peers. So although these studies are obviously incredibly valuable um, in that they tell us that there are parallels to the support-seeking behaviors which we observe with caregivers in infancy, um, and that those carry forward, seem to carry forward at a behavioral level to what we see later in adolescence and later childhood, what these studies almost all do is they study the behavioral expression of what is, is essentially considered a mental process, the internal working model. So this is really where our study comes in because um, we felt that neural measurements might perhaps give us a more direct route to tap into this generalization. Um, so what we did is, in a nutshell, uh, we assessed children on the attachment interview and we selected them for um, secure and insecure dismissing attachment, which is similar to avoided attachment in infancy. And uh, then we had them play the virtual ball toss game, Cyberball, to allow assessment of ERPs. And in this game, participants are led to believe that they're hooked up with two other peers over the internet with whom they can toss the ball back and forth um, and just play this, this ball toss game. But in actual fact, those two other players are programmed to um, first be fair, throw the ball to the subject on a regular basis, and then this segues seamlessly into exclusion, where subjects hardly get any balls. Next, subjects self-report their feelings of ostracism, and finally, we added a second fair play phase. Now, the challenge with um, assessing ERPs in Cyberball is that this is a dynamic paradigm, and for ERPs, we need static events. So the trick that Mike Crowley came up with is to make the ball vanish and then reappear en route to the other player. So the moment it reappears is the event which is used to lock the ERPs to. And this allows us to, to take events which actually look identical on the surface but carry a different meaning based on the phase they occur in. So just imagine you, you don't um, get the ball um, and this um, occurs many times in a row. Now that has a very different meaning than when it only occurs once or twice. So for the current study, um, we were actually interested in whether subjects would respond differently to receiving the ball before and after exclusion, and whether that would differ as a function of their attachment classification. So what we found um, compared to secure subjects is that uh, when dismissing subjects received the ball again after exclusion, that they're in two had increased from their previous activity during fair play. And the N2 has been connected to violation of expectancy in oddball and novelty paradigms. So in other words, um, receiving the ball again after exclusion is, seems to be more unexpected or surprising for dismissing compared to secure subjects. And that um, seems to be, or, or makes a lot of sense um, against um, the background that they might have received more rejections from their parents in infancy, as has been shown for avoidant infants. Okay, so the, the take-home message from our study um, really is that neural data supports that it is indeed expectations that are responsible for this generalization. 
And moreover, insecure um, children may not bounce back as easily from exclusion because um, they don't snap out of this negative expectancy. And this, in turn, places them at greater risk for psychopathology, um, internalized psychopathology, or also being excluded on a more permanent and regular basis by their peers.